Hello! This session we are diving deeper into Sparkle, specifically querying semantic data from Pool Party. We are going to discuss about the data that is created when you use Pool Party and where this data is stored. We will mention some of the basic graphs created around the Pool Party project and what data they contain. Next, we detail the Sparkle endpoint available for each project and how to access it programmatically. We will also mention the Sparkle shell. To change the data using Sparkle, we introduce you to the update ABI call. When you use Pool Party, the data created is stored as triples in a Sesame RDF triple store. Depending on which data is created, this is stored in different repositories. You can see repositories like databases in a relational database system. The created repositories are User Repository, Pool Party Tesoro System Repository, Custom Schemas Repositories, Corpus Meta Info Repository, and each project data is stored in its own repository. Let's take a look where to find them and what they contain. Maybe you remember from our user management session, each user with a super admin role has access to the advanced header menu and uh, the admin scripts. Here you find the entry point to the Pool Party Sparkle shell, which looks like this. Um, here, of course, you can do Sparkle queries uh, for select, but also for delete, insert and update. We advise to use this shell only if you are familiar to Sparkle and to the graph structures of Pool Party projects. As the message uh, already suggests, we also recommend creating a snapshot of your project before changing the data. In this way, you can always roll it back, restore the data if something goes wrong. In the Sparkle shell, you have access to uh, all the repositories uh, on the server. Let's start with the user repository and see what it contains. The user repository stores the data uh, of all users on the server, also the user groups and um, the information about which user has access to which user group. Next, the Pool Party Tesoro system repository contains information about all the projects, uh, their creator, uh, their language, uh, which user groups they have, and uh, so on. The Custom Schemas repository uh, contains information about all the custom schemes available uh, on the server, um, also information about to which project they belong, uh, and any other metadata, creator, date of creation, and so on. Then you have the Corpus Metainfo repository. This contains information about the corpora created um, on the server, uh, respectively um, the UUID uh, and to which project they belong. And, of course, you have for each project uh, its own repository. And, um, in addition, each project has a graph search repository and a corpus uh, repository. The corpus repository contains, for instance, all the documents and their annotation. Um, and this is created if you use the corpus management feature in Pool Party. In addition to repositories, you also have named graphs. A project repository has its data stored in named graphs. You can imagine them as tables in a database. The most important graphs we would like to mention are the Thesaurus data graph contains concepts and all their information, and also the Scosic cell if you are taking advantage of this feature. History data graph contains everything related to changes that occur in the project. 
the workflow data graph is written when you use the approval workflow feature. Quality results are stored in the quality report graph when you generate a report. Linked data is the graph where the data from other resources are copied into, for example from DBpedia. The VoID graph contains project metadata such as number of concepts, creation date and so on. The ADMS graph contains data used to describe the thesaurus if you decide to make use of the ADMS ontology to do so. And the deprecated graph contains the concepts which were previously deleted. Let's look how to query this data. We are again in the PowerShell of the server, where only super admin users have access, and we connect to a project repository. Let's take this one. We would like to find out which are the graphs of this project. And we see, for instance, the quality report graph, which appears when um, uh, qualities uh, report is generated, sparkle list, uh, the void graph, candidate concepts, uh, the history graph, and um, link data graphs, um, suggested concepts, blacklists, the ADMS, and uh, disambiguation graph are present for this project. Each project you create in Pool Party automatically has a Sparkle endpoint. You can reach it from Pool Party when you open a project, but also through typing your server name slash Pool Party slash Sparkle slash Project ID. This endpoint is read only, so you can query your data from different graphs but not change anything. It does not matter if the project is public or not, this endpoint is always read only. The Sparkle endpoint can be called programmatically as a POST or GET request with the required parameter query. Through the content type parameter, which is optional, one can set what the response type should be. XML is the default, but you can also have options like JSON, Trig or Turtle. Let's remember the question from our previous Sparkle lesson. Are there employees who also write articles? We issue a Sparkle API call against the publication company Sparkle Project Endpoint with this query. The results are the names we are looking for uh, in the previous session. Find the specification of the API method and all the information about repositories and graphs on our help documentation. To run Sparkle queries that change your data in a programmatical way, you need to use the update API call, which lets you run a Sparkle query in its body. This is a POST request method, which requires the project UUID to be part of the URL call, and in its body, you can post the Sparkle query itself. Let's run an example using our favorite REST console. Mine is Postman. I would like for this project to uh, add an alternative label under this concept. So let's use Postman to do so. Here I pasted the API call for uh, this uh, specific project and the uh, update method. It is a post uh, method and I also need to basic authenticate. And in the body I need to paste my uh, Sparkle insert query where I insert new alternative label. But remember, before you alter your data, we recommend that you create a snapshot. So the snapshots can also be triggered uh, through the API. They are a get method and um, the same as before, you have the UUID of your project slash snapshot and as a parameter you can write a, a particular note. Of course you also need to authenticate. So let's first create a snapshot. We can check in the interface for our snapshot and we see it is created here with this note, with the same note. So if we go back to 
uh, our update query. We first authenticate, we write our Sparkle query in the body, and then we just uh, do the call. Upon success, we receive 200 OK. And now we can check in the interface in the front end to see if we have changes. And we see here the new alternative label. In this session, we discussed where the data created with pool party is stored, and we specified some of the named graphs created around the pool party project. We mentioned the Sparkle endpoint automatically available for each project and how one can access this programmatically. We mentioned the Sparkle shell, useful for super admins, and we also called a Sparkle update query using the update API method. Thank you for taking part in Pool Party Semantic Integration Sessions.